You asked for more gem explanations, and I'm here to break down a bunch for y'all. We're talking character traits, symbolism, and real-world gem properties. I'm Chris Carr, and today I'm talking to you about the off-color gems from Steven Universe. I'd love to kick things off by thanking all of our amazing donors on Patreon, especially Super Nerd sponsor Lauren Linton! Thank you so much for your help, you guys. If you want to pitch in, check out our tiers and see if one works for you. Well, thank you kindly. And hey, if you want to give yourself a little treat for being an awesome Steven Universe fan, click that Tee Public link and buy yourself some swag. On to the off colors! You can't just walk around on the surface like that. You're off color, just like the rest of us. What do you mean, off color? For the purposes of this video, we'll be focusing just on the gems. No Lars here. That's gonna be for another video. Before we talk about the united front that is the off colors, let's talk about what that term they've taken ownership of means. The Diamond Authority coined the term off colors when referring to gems they deemed defective and of no use to the empire. Such gems were outcasts forced into hiding to avoid being shattered. Remember, the diamonds strove for perfection. The only gems to avoid such a fate were the various quartzes kept in Pink Diamond Zoo who worked for Blue Diamond. When talking about the ragtag group of misfits, the off colors, we're talking about fluorite, Podparadasha, the Rutile Twins, and Rhodonite. We'll examine each of them. Fluorite seems to be the de facto leader of the off colors and is a fusion of six different gems. And she's ready to accept more to the fusion party if they're a good match. Because she's a fusion of differing gems, Homeworld deemed her defective. Her body is segmented and resembles that of a caterpillar. Once she leaves Homeworld, she becomes the chief engineer aboard her vessel. At a 2017 San Diego Comic-Con panel, series creator Rebecca Sugar confirmed that fluorite represents polyamorous relationships. Sugar created the character after speaking with queer teens in an LGBTQ center in Long Beach, California about needing greater representation. Fluorite is comprised of six individuals who love and accept each other and are choosing to live together. In fact, the reason why fluorite's speech pattern is so slow is because all six gems need to decide what they all want to say. Fluorite, how are the engines looking? Let me check. Real life fluorite is an industrial mineral composed of calcium and fluorine and is used in a wide variety of chemical, metallurgical, and ceramic processes. Fluorite is allochromatic, meaning that it can be tinted with elemental impurities. These variations have led to fluorite being called the most colorful mineral in the world. The most common colors are purple, blue, green, yellow, or colorless. Color variation is determined by impurities and exposure to radiation. I love this fact, since it seems to tie so well into fluorite's design. On the spiritual side of things, people who believe in the healing power of crystals say that fluorite is a highly stabilizing stone and is useful for grounding and harmonizing energy. It's said to heighten mental abilities as well. The different colors all offer different abilities, so let's look at rainbow fluorite, because that possesses all of these abilities, and is probably the best representation of our gal here. Rainbow fluorite can absorb excess energy, clear communication between physical and spiritual planes, merge personal and spiritual energy, bring inner peace, and bring about understanding and unity. I think this is the first gem where I found all these properties to be true of our character. Of course, fluorite would be all about unity, merging, and connection. Next, we have Pod Paradasha. Pad Paradasha is a defective sapphire that can only have visions of events slightly in the past. So, not super useful unless you're a goldfish, which maybe she kind of is. Because of these visions, she seems to have a delayed reaction to the events that transpire around her in real time. This isn't a great trait for a gem that's in hiding from an evil empire, and her fellow outcasts usually need to step in to save her. On board the Sun Incinerator, she takes on the job of technical advisor. Don't use the thrusters! We're going to lose power! Thanks, Padparadasha. The word Padaparadasha comes from the Sanskrit words Padmaranga, which translates to color of the lotus flower. Padparadasha's design looks a lot like Princess Peach from Super Mario, and there's definitely a reason for that. Padparadasha sapphires are called peach sapphires. Sugar has gone on record saying that Patty is more of a peach design, while sapphire she's felt has always been Zelda-esque. We learn in the episode, Your Mother and Mine, that orange sapphires are extremely rare. This is true in real life as well. Their scarcity increases their market value, and they can be mostly found in Sri Lanka, Madagascar, and Tanzania. This stone is said to represent joy and foresight, and we know pads ain't working with 2020 vision here, y'all. The twins of Rutile will bring one, no, two, strangers to our current place of hiding. We know, Pad Paracha, your prediction already happened. Next, we have the Rutile Twins, a defective Rutile that's split during its formation. 
When the twins emerged, they scared off all the other Rutile, allowing them to escape the kindergarten facility before they could be shattered. The twins are very helpful, and the first of the off-colors to meet Steven and Lars, helping them escape from a Robinoid. They often speak in alternating words or sentences and repeat what the other says, just a little differently, and they speak in different tones. Lefty speaks with a higher tone, while the right is lower. These two were about to be scanned when we pulled them under. We were just in time. In the Off Colors episode, the twins are shown using their gemstone to project a red light, like a sort of flashlight. I know these dudes went back to space and everything, but why didn't I get a scene with Lion trying to chase after that little laser pointer? Why? The twins work as the pilots aboard the ship. They're both Han and Chewie. Rutile in real life, I think, is gorgeous. It's this sort of needle-shaped crystal, so it'll look like a tumbleweed in quartz, like it's got threads running through it. And the red version is beautiful. I found a picture of a growth that looks just like the twins, and I got way too excited about it. I was like running around the house, screaming about this picture. No one cared. No one cared at all. Just me. Hey, you must be the Rutile twins. <gasps> I've never seen anyone like you before. We were made like this. Rutile loves to grow his prism-shaped crystals within other minerals. Long prisms of rutile occur in tons of different gem minerals, uh, like quartz, conundrum, garnet, those are all just a few examples. Now sometimes these little needles are coarse and visible, which adds to the look and novelty of the gem. This is like how we get star sapphires, so the gem will be cut to accentuate these threads in a really pleasing way. Rutile is the most abundantly natural occurring form of titanium dioxide, making it the preferred source of titanium ore. Rutile has long been used in the production of glass, porcelain, ceramics, but despite it being a staple in manufacturing and in industrial production, it mostly remained an unknown mineral up until recently when it was discovered to be useful in geological research. Rutile's unique properties are allowing researchers to gain insight into the history and formation of other rocks and minerals. It's said that Rutile gives off an aura of safety and calmness, promotes forgiveness, and helps combat phobias. It's also supposed to allow the wearer to be more intuitive. This fighting fear trait is honestly kind of heartbreaking since all the other Rutile were terrified of the twins. But hey, now that there's peace in the galaxy and they've graduated little homeschool, I'm sure they're feeling much better about themselves and have made a lot of friends. The last member of the off-color gems is Rodanite, a voluntary permanent fusion of a pearl and a ruby. You must be Rodanite. A ruby and a pearl? That must have been a story. I want all the details. Her two halves once belonged to a Morganite, but were replaced after they were caught fusing. Rodonite is depicted as easily spooked and incredibly stressed out. She's paranoid because every ragtag bunch of misfits needs a conspiracy theorist going on about chemtrails. This paranoia and fright is totally understandable though. She spent years hiding underground and people are literally out to kill her. Her anxiety is problematic when it comes to her position as head of strategic operations aboard the Sun Incinerator since she'll hyper focus while doing risk assessment. But hey, that does keep the team's defenses on high alert. Fun fact. Okay, so she's a ruby and a pearl, right? Her pearl, thus far, is the only pearl we've seen in the show that's never belonged to a diamond. I don't know why I'm always so surprised when I see the actual gem, but I honestly get so excited each time when the stone really looks like the character. And the coloring here is perfect. Rodonite is a pink manganese silicate mineral that contains iron, magnesium, and calcium. It's pretty uncommon and only found in a few small deposits across the globe, everywhere from Argentina to Massachusetts. You can get Rodonite, Brad! You're never gonna go back to Massachusetts? That's what they keep in the bogs. It's just cranberries and rodentite. That, yeah, that's my theory. <laughs> I thought you did research. <laughs> Today, this mineral is used as an ornamental stone in beads and sculptures and is highly sought after by collectors. The gemstone rodentite is believed to help express confidence and lovingness. You're supposed to hold rodentite to dispel anxiety and remain calm and centered in stressful situations. Girl, just use those four arms and hug yourself. Let the calm wash over you, baby. As per usual, we have a gem that does the opposite of what its healing properties are supposed to handle. We were supposed to have two more off colors, two gray gems named Flint and Chert. These characters were scrapped though because they were going to be morally opposed to fighting, which is what they were supposed to do for Homeworld and being ostracized for beliefs rather than the way they were didn't seem to fit with the other off colors. As of the episode Little Graduation, our misfits have learned all about Earth and are ready to head back to the stars with their fearless leader Lars to do more spacey swashbuckling. I'm hoping we'll get more space side adventures in future episodes of Steven Universe Future. Did this exploration of the off colors give you some new insight into them? Do you think we'll be seeing more of them? Let me know in the comments section. Thanks again to everyone on Patreon, T Public, and all y'all who came here and watched. For more Steven Universe content, click to the left. Thanks for watching. See you, Space Cowboy. <laughs>